All right, um, give me one second here, just checking for the fittings. Jason, you can hear me? Okay. Now, uh, we will start. Okay. All right. And... All right, um, so let's get started now. So it is 10 o'clock here. So I um, just want to let you guys know that the both exams are available now. So if you would like to take the exams, please contact your um, sales manager and um, he or she will able to provide you the exam link. The exam already opened it at, today at noon and it will be closed on Sunday the 23rd at noon. So basically you were having um, three days for taking the exams. And after we grace all the exams on Sunday, we will be holding a lucky draw event on Monday. And so for the first, second and the third prize is only for people who pass at least one of the exams. And then for the special prize, it is for all people, um, no matter that you pass or you uh, didn't pass the test, you will still have the chance to win a gift card. And um, in terms of the exams, it, for each exam, it contains 30 questions of multiple choice and one essay question, um, a total of 100 points. And the passing score has to be 80 or above. So you need to at least get a B or above for passing the test. And um, when you and the directions, so the total amount of time that you can take for the test is 90 minutes. When you are taking the exam, if you have any technical questions, please feel free to um, um, find us, um, email or Skype if you already have a Skype group with us. And we can help you throughout the uh, technical uh, sections on the exams. And uh, what else? And for today, we will be focusing on the technical training. So for today's um, content, we, I will walk you through the basic setup and then go over to some of the events setup, but not all of them. And also the common use cases and some uh, troubleshooting, like common, um, common issues and how you're going to fix it. And um, let's get started here. So uh, before we get into the uh, setting sections, let's take a look on the server uh, recommendations. Uh, please let me know if I'm speaking too fast and I will um, try to slow down. So here is a um, server recommendation tables for both of the cloud server and the on-premise server. So this um, table is just for a reference. So if um, you would like to look at the first, I mean, the second columns. So um, for example, if your project is having um, somewhere around like 100 um, endpoints and you would like to look at the server's capacity with at least two cards, on the CPU and four gigabytes on RAM and the um, NICs and the storage for have at least 120 gigabytes. And if you are working on a like a very huge project with like, let's say like 1000 um, endpoints, you would need a hardware that with a better capacity such as six quad on CPU and um, eight gigabyte RAM and then the storage. And um, that is just a table for reference. Then we will get into the um, installation part. So for the IP audio center, it is a um, system that you can um, deploy it on a cloud-based server or a on-premise or a virtual machine. And uh, 
if you are installed on your own server, we can provide you the ISO file. And uh, besides the ISO file options, we also um, provide you the IAS L100, the out of the box ready, ready to use server. So all you need to do is to plug in the power card cables and the ethernet cables and it is ready to go. And let's look at the IAS first. So if you are using the IAS for the um, IP audio um, for the IP audio centers, once you receive the IAS, the first thing you would like to configure the IAS is to change the IP address. So for the IAS, we default for RAM part, we default in uh, 1.100. And for LAN part, it is 10.100. So my personal recommendation would be directly connecting your laptop, like your uh, laptop or your desktop to the IAS and then changing the IP address. You can do it after you get into the 1.100 or the 10.100. You are able to get into the 1990 part, the management systems and change the IP address there. That way you don't need to run a comment on changing the IP. And then um, also using the management system, you don't need to reboot the um, you don't need to reboot the, uh, the server. And um, for hardware uh, considerations, the IAS supports a maximum number of 100 extensions. So, and it does not support the expense on extension. So if you are working on a server that uh, project, I mean, so if you're working on a project that is over 100 um, endpoints, we will be recommending you to um, switch your servers or to get a um, hardware server that with a better capacity. And then the uh, next one would be, using the ISO file. So if you are installing the uh, systems on your hardware server or the uh, cloud servers or even a uh, visual machine. So you can download the ISO file from our website and then um, follow the instruction here. So uh, first you would like to download the ISO files and then you need to create a bootable USB drive and then plug in the USB to the um, servers and then choosing the image and then it will automatically um, start the deploy uh, process. And um, one thing we need to, not one thing, like two things we need to be aware of when you are deploying on a visual machine. First, it would be the network connection. So if you're using a visual machine, make sure your network connection is on the bridge option. It is not on the, um, the NATs or the local hosts or um, other options, it has to be on bridge. And then um, the second thing we need to be aware is after the whole, after the installation process is complete and you don't see a IP address listed out, it got nothing to show out, uh, you may would like to restart the visual machine um, on your on your desktop or on your laptops, um, usually it can work with the restarting. And uh, let's see what else. And also, if you are using a visual machine, make sure when you are creating the um, the visual machine, make sure you have the enough storage. You need to leave at least um, thirty gigabytes of storage for the uh, machines, otherwise it won't able to complete the whole installation process. And um, then the next one would be um, using Docker. So if you are installing the um, systems on a cloud server, you may also use the Docker. So first thing you would like to do is to install Docker first on your um, on your on your host servers and then run the comment the uh, Docker Compose command lines. It will basically um, uh, pulling the the image the system image from the um, repositories on GIF from us, 
and it provides the whole um, details st um, steps here. And um, also for this installation guide, we also have the documents on, um, on our website. If you guys need it, you may um, find it on the website as well. The uh, next application, so after we successfully install the systems and it is working, you can log into the, um, to the interface. The next thing we would like to download is the dispatch console. So downloading the dispatch console is much easier. So it's just a uh, desktop application. You uh, visit our website and the download, there is a um, IP audio categories. And underneath, we have the dispatch console, select the version that is matched with your computer. So uh, currently we are providing four different versions. So two for Windows and two for Mac OS. Um, Windows, we provide the 32 bit and also 64 bit. So you need, before you download, you need to check for your, um, your computer's capacity. And then, um, for Mac, since I believe that was last year, they used the M1 chip. So that makes the, um, the software base a little bit different. So we are providing both the, um, with the M M1 chips and not the M1 chip. So. And um, if you, and then the next application would be the apps. So if you, would like to use the dispatch apps, you may find the dispatch apps both in Google Play or the, apps, uh, the, the Apple uh, App Store. And then let's uh, move on to the configuration here. So I have listed out the basic setup. So um, if you are the first time user, um, after you receiving the devices and also the, um, the systems, here is the basic step that you would like to follow to achieve the most basic levels of features such as playing a background music and um, also like making a paging. Um, and you, you should be able to achieve those like uh, basic features after this setting. And I will walk you through let me end my slides here and I will walk you through how to set it up. Okay, IP audio centers. And let me switch my, um, give me one second. Let me switch my cameras here. Then you guys can see the environment that I just set up for my lab. This, here it goes, can you guys see it? So it's just a quick environment that I set up for these uh, demonstrations. So in this demonstration, we will be using the um, IAS that is um, underneath the SQ10. And then the, um, Next to the SQ10, we have a SW15, the common speaker, and also have my common, uh, the common speaker that is connected with a alarm light. And um, also I believe I connected with a DM11. Then um, in front of the, the IAS, I got a um, IBO3 intercom. And then next to the intercom, that is the BM11. Then I also got a X10 SIP paging gateway. So if we have the time um, left to um, demonstrating the um, X10, that would be great. And I got a uh, press button that is connected with the X10 and also a, um, like a small speaker that is also connected to the X10. So let me... Um, Okay. And um, right here, let me go to the interface right here. Okay, here we go. And that is the, so um, that is the IP address. 
for the IAS that I have on my um, on my lab table. I will change the IP address for the IAS. So if you would like to change the IP address or the time zones, you may go to here. So we have a pod called the 1919. And then the username and password for logging into this management system is not a main amend. It is root and the password is IP audio centers at circle.com. And um, here I just log into the uh, management systems. And then we would like to go to networking. And right here, if your first time using the IAF, it should be showing um, on like uh, 1.100 or 10.100, and you would like to change the IP address using these features, the IP address here. If you are changing the IP address within this interface, it will um, require the, um, the servers to restart. And then since we are on this management system and I would like to introduce a few features that is quite helpful using the management systems. And uh, the first would be once you're logging in into this interface, you should see there is a system time right here. If you find out the system is in a wrong time zone and you would like to change the time zone, you may do it right here. So you can choose in the, uh, the time zones, the time zones here, or you can use the, um, the NTP, the NTP server. So we got a full list of um, NTP servers here. So you can change it to a, um, to a time zone that we've match with your, uh, your time, or you can do it like manually setting with uh, whatever times that you would like to set up. And uh, for setting up the time zone is very important because for most of the operation that we done within the, um, the dispatch console or the, um, the centers, they are all time-based. So you need to make sure that your time is Correct. Your time zone for the system is correct. And let's cancel. And then uh, let's look at the broadcast here. So on our so on our systems, we provide a automatic uh, auto backup feature. So this auto backup feature can save the latest five days of backup system files and it can only save for five days, five days. And if you are on the sixth day, it will override the first days and the seventh days will be overriding for the, uh, sec uh, the seventh day will be overriding the second day. Does it make sense? So it will only save for the latest five days of um, system backup file. And, um, it is defaulted in uh, disabled. So if you would like to turn on this feature, you need to um, enable this, um, this feature here on this little switch. And then we have the lock. So um, if there is any uh, problems or issues that you have with uh, the systems and you couldn't figure out, our technical team may um, ask you to send us the, uh, the logs or the, um, the capture files that we are able to analyze like what kind of issue it is. So here is the place that you can download the logs. And also we have the ethernet uh, capture here. So click the stuff and do whatever operation that is um, not working and then click stop, it will be automatically downloading a, um, a log file. Then we can use that file for analyzing the, uh, the issues. And then we have the multicast and then we have the hot standby. So uh, one question regarding the hot standby from yesterday's um, webinar was, 
So the hot standby is basically you are having two server to run simultaneously. And then there are uh, several minimum requirements for setting up the hot standby. So for the first one, make sure that they are under the same network. And um, the hot standby feature, of course, it only applies to on-premise. So if you are um, installing the system on the cloud, so you don't need, like you don't even have these uh, parts open and um, only applies to on-premise and uh, make sure, first make sure that they are under the same network. And then the second would be make sure two of the server, they have the same size of this. So that this storage has to be same or bigger. Um, I mean, like, uh, for example, if your primary server has a um, this storage, let's say it's like a 180, 128, and then your backup server has a smaller this storage, so the backup servers won't be able to cover all the uh, backup files from the primary server, right? So um, the second requirement would be the this has to be the same or the backup has to be um, larger. And then uh, the third minimum requirement would be the system version has to be the same. So you cannot have one with like 1.0.7 and the other one is 1.0.8. So two of the system version has to be the same. And then we will be, um, if you're using the hot standby, so we'll be just turn it on and then selecting the server mode, like to be a primary server or the secondary server. And then you also have the secret key, fill in the same secret key here, and then filling out all these information. And also one question from uh, yesterday was, um, let's assume that you are having uh, two, um, servers. So the uh, server A as primary servers, and you have server B as the backup, the secondary server. So when A is down, so the primary server is down, B would be able to pick up all the running operation that was running on A, and then it was switching back, right? It, B becomes the um, primary servers. And then at this point, we don't have any backup servers. So, but when A is fixed and it is um, back online because we had we got the uh, heartbeat detections between the servers. So if our systems detected, the, okay, all right, um, A is good. It's good to go. It is working, it's running. And then A will be automatically become back to the primary and B will be the secondary. And since um, two servers are running simultaneously, anything that is um, like any changes or any new data that is done when B is the primary server, it will automatically um, sending to A and they have the same copy on all the, all the settings besides the setting that you done within the system. So if you change, for example, like when B is the primary server and you change the time zones or you change the name of the system uh, for those sections is not covered within the, um, the backup data list. And um, that is the um, hot standby feature and Ethernet captures. And let's see what else. We have the logs here. We have all the logs. So if you would like to analyze your logs and um, rebuilding your logs, so you can also do it here for rebuilding all the logs. And uh, let's go back to the systems. And for locking in, in yes. And then when, um, and um, when you are, uh, I forgot where I left. Okay, here we go. So when we are logging into the, um, the system, first you would see, 
Okay, so let me uh, zoom it out a little bit. Okay, here we go. And Okay, and once you are logging in, you should be able to see your uh, system version. So my um, IES, it has the latest version on the 1.0.9. And then showing the uptimes and the storage, et cetera, and also the license information. And it says un activated here. So for all of our systems, um, including the, um, the ISO files, once you deploy the systems, it comes with a 45 days of free trial period. And after these 45 days, you will need a license key to activate your systems. And we will be doing here. So on the license, you're going to fill out all the um, the information is like contact name, email, IP phones, country, selecting the country, and then uh, fill out all the information here. Click on the download buttons. It will um, generate a file. Send these files to your sales manager or your um, distributor, and they are able, will be able to provide you the license key. So just click on upload and upload the license key to activate the uh, systems. And if you are using the IAS, you would like to change the endpoint license here with 100 because for all the, um, the IAS, it comes with a um, license that contains 100 endpoints. So you would like to fill in uh, 100 here. And then let's move back to the zip account. So um, once you're logging in, the first step you would like to do is to create the zip account here. So uh, how many zip account do I need? One, two, three, four, five. So let's create five zip account here. And uh, passbook. So we do recommend you to use a strong password, but since I'm on a demonstration, so I will be creating a, a weak password for easy memorize. And um, if you are using any uh, video device, such as the video intercom or the, um, the video phone, you would like to enable this option here, the enable video. And then for audio codecs, we support this for, and uh, when you are creating the account and also registering the, uh, the zip device, make sure that you have at least one audio code that, that is matched with each other. Um, I mean, like for example, if the account that the zip account that I create only supports G722 and my speaker and only supports the 711, that uh, that means the device is not going to work because they don't have the same um, audio codex. So make sure that you have at least one same codex matching with the account and the device. Same as the transport protocol here. If you are choosing the UDP, make sure that you choose the UDP on the device. If you're choosing the UDP here and then you're choosing the TLS on the, um, the device, that is not going to work neither. So UDP, da, 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 submit, click on apply. Okay. And um, after I create the account, the next thing we can do, it can be either to create a paging groups or register the systems, uh, I mean, register the device on the, onto the systems. So um, I prefer to register the, uh, the device onto the system first, and then we are going to like create the um, paging groups and the users. So let's do a um, registration on the device. And uh, let's see. So I got my SW15 here on the 17.68 address. For all of our devices, they um, support, so each device supports three zip accounts. That uh, means you can register 
the device on multiple zip based server. So you can register the uh, for, you can register the SW15 on the IP audio centers and also on a PBX and also on another zip based server. So we support three zip lines for our endpoints. And um, by the way, so before you logging in into this interface, um, I believe the previous step you need to do is to get the device IP address, right? So all of our um, endpoints is defaulted using the DHCP. If but if DHCP is not available um, in your network, it will defaulted um, using the Stardex IP address uh, one point one hundred. And for getting the um, IP address, there are two different methods that you can get the device IP address. The first one would be um, um, getting from the device. For example, like in the back of the SW15, we have a little uh, black button. Push the button, hold for five seconds and release. It will announce out the IP address of the speaker. And um, the second method would be using the SAAD tool. The SAAD tool will be able to scan all the available circle endpoints um, within the same network. Uh, let me show you uh, one quick SAAD here. Okay, so that is my uh, SAD tool. As you guys can see, I got a IVO3 right here. The, um, uh, the IP address is 17.56 and the software version is 1.2.4. It didn't scan out my SW15 because my SW15 is on a older version. It is on uh, 1.2.3. So if you would like to use the SAD tool, the minimum requirement would be uh, upgrading your older device to the latest um, software version to the 1.2.4. Otherwise, this tool is not going, not able to scan the device. And then let's move back. And um, you guys can see on my IVO3, the 17.56, that the software version on this device is 1.2.4. That's why the SAD2 can be scanned out on this device, but not the SW15, because the SW15 is on this version. Here you go. And then um, let's address the device onto the uh, systems. So for six server, we need to fill in the IP audio center's um, address. Oops. And we just created five zip account, right? Zip accounts. So we just created the uh, 101, 102, 25. So let's do 101. Five, six. So since I chose the UDP, I need to choose the UDP here. And then auto answers, you can choose um, yes or answer uh, delays or notes. And then um, NAT mode. Um, if you would like to use the dispatch console, make sure that you have this option uh, turned on. Buddy, hey, stay up here. Okay, all right, and um, let's continue. So make sure you have, uh, here go. make sure you have this option uh, turned on if you would like to use the uh, dispatch console and also activate, click on submit, and then we can go back to the device information post, never back to the device information. And right now we can see 
that the device with this zip account 101 is registered on this IP address and it has the um, StartX and also the um, both StartX here. And uh, we can go back to the IP audio centers and then on the registered StartX page, On 1001, we can see that we have the 17.6 TA is registered and this other is OK. And then let's, um, let's see what else we need to register. So let's register the IVO3. So let's do IVO3. Okay, one oh oh two. Then um, let's go back to the FedEx and refresh. Okay, 103, I believe that is my zip phone on my desktop. So 17.253, uh, here we go. Okay. So um, for this demonstration, I'll be using a firmware um, IP phone here. So on the, this is the um, device IP address and I got 103, 103, and it is registered to my um, to my uh, systems. And then the next thing we can do is to create the paging groups. So you would like to, um, by the way, so after you address the um, third party device, make sure you need to check for the um, device type because on our systems, we, um, we're not able to detecting the device type from the third party's device. So when you are registering the, um, for example, like a um, speaker, it probably would be um, in a wrong type. It will be showing as a IP phone or a intercom. And if you would like to change it, you need to manually change right here within the device. So on type, we support the uh, paging device, intercom, IP phone cameras, microphones, et cetera. And um, in this case, since my SW15 is connected with a uh, press button, I would need to change the uh, device type to be intercoms for the uh, dual path two-way communication purpose. And otherwise, if it works as a paging, paging device, it can work only for the one-way audio communications, not the two-way communications. So if you are using the SW15 or the SC15 to work as a intercom, you need to manually change the device type right here. And then um, for um, active push, if your system is installed on the cloud, you would like to turn on this option, but if like everything is under the same local area network, you would like to have this um, option to be disabled. And here we were able to connect the video, uh, the IP cameras here. Since I don't have any IP cameras registered yet, so I don't showing any of the IP cameras here. But if um, that's assuming that I have the IP camera here and I select the IP cameras. So whenever I push the buttons on the um, on the speakers or the on the intercoms, it will be automatically pulling the connected cameras right here and throwing onto the console. And then um, let's submit. Uh, not one o o three. Did I choose one o three? I need to change right here to be intercoms. Click on submit. Apply. Then the next step we would like to do is creating the groups. So let's add name. I don't know, it's like Emily's group. Here we go. 
And then uh, we'll be choosing the dispatch user since we haven't created any of the dispatch user yet. It won't have the uh, dispatch user list out. But when we are creating the dispatch user, we can select the, the zones that the dispatch user can be managed um, later on. So we don't need to select the uh, dispatch user now. For paging modes, so for paging modes, we support the um, one-way audio simplex mode and also the duplex mode. If you have the um, intercom domains, um, for example, like for your song, there is any um, intercom or the two-way talkback speaker that is in your songs, you would like to change the paging mode to be duplex for the two-way um, communication purpose. And then we are going to select all the, the devices into the group and then click on submit those. And the next step would be creating the dispatch user. So my dispatch user here. Let's add username uh, Emily six, and then right here for permissions, you can give in different. Uh, since we are the uh, amends, we can give different uh, permissions to the dispatch user. So we have the six different permission here. So you, if you don't want that the um, dispatch user to make any um, external calls or um, changing the background music, you can uncheck the box, the permission box right here. Then the um, access level uh, is also what I explained that for yesterday, we have the highest one to the lowest 12. So the dispatch user who has a higher access level can um, do some of the Telephony features overrides the dispatch user who has a lower access level, such as call monitor, call splits, or call buckets, et cetera. And then uh, group management. So we can select the groups for this dispatch user. So one dispatch user can manage multiple groups and, multiple, and uh, one group can be managed by multiple dispatch users. And then the IP phone, here it goes. So the IP phone here means the master phone. Only the master phone is able to do the paging. So if you have like 10 IP phones that is registered on the systems, but you are only selecting the 103 as master, master phone. So only the 103 is able to make the paging. And, um, and also, if uh, so, basically, only the device within the same groups is able to call each other. Um, if the device is in another group, the um, group A member is not able to call the um, the group B's member unless they have the same dispatch user. So, for example. Um, I am dispatch user Emily and I have group A manage and I have group B. So in this case, the, um, the um, device, the members on the group A is able to call the members on, uh, on uh, group B. And um, also master phone can call each other whether or not the um, dispatch user are the same. So master phone can always call another master phone but a master phone cannot call another group of member if they're not under the same dispatch user. Did that make it clear? Okay, uh, we will do some demonstration on that later on. And, um, okay, and let's submit. Applied. Let me switch um, to the dispatch console. Okay. 
Is it better way that I share my whole desktop here? So let's do it this way. Okay, I believe uh, you guys can see my whole desktop, right? And um, the second, let's log out and then log back in. Log out, yes. And because we created a new dispatch user, Emily and I, and we'll see four, five, six. And um, locking in, I see all my three devices that is listed in this um, in uh, this panel. And uh, before we move on to the dispatch console, let's address a camera on the um, on the system for if, uh, for a better uh, demonstration. So let's go back to the. IP audio center right here and for devices. So if you would like to register the um, IP cameras onto the system, you need to manually um, using this feature, the ads. So you add, click on the ads and choosing the cameras here, fill out the names and the RTSP address. And um, let's use the um, cameras that is on the IVO3, it can book us a individual cameras. So um, if you turn on the RTSP feature, um, not here, right here. If you turn on the RTSP access feature here, it will provide you two stream, one for the mainstream and the substream. So mainstream have a better uh, quality. So use the um, RTSP address provided here. It would be the same process if you guys were just reading another IP camera, such as the IP cameras from Haiku Vision or from Dahua. Um, all the same process here. Fill out the names and the RTSP address. I know IV03 camera. Okay, and we have the IP cameras here. Since the IP camera is not taking uh, any one of the SIP accounts, so you may just as many um, IP cameras onto the system as you need. Then uh, let's go back to the consoles and refresh. Okay, so uh, yes, one thing I forgot, I need to dispatch the cameras into the groups. Here we go, so I got my um, cameras, my IV03 cameras here. So uh, before you activate it, you need to click on this little uh, video icons, the cameras icons, and then it says done. So the cameras is created. So let's, um, here we go. Let's expand the uh, video panels. Here we go. So that is the um, the IVO3 cameras showing on the uh, dispatch console. And let's close it. So um, one common case that when you click on the uh, this little icon, it says um, I forgot like what exactly on the uh, comment it is, but it says like something is not successful. It's like not successfully created and it is on a red alert box. That, um, so if you are getting that error, first thing you would like to check is the RTSP address. And um, the RTSP address is causing 90% of the problems. So, a lot of time when we are copy and paste the RTSP address, it contains a space um, in front of the address or like behind, like in the back of the uh, address or like a command or a period. So make sure there is no extra space or um, like commas or periods on the RTSP address. 
And um, for different IP cameras manufacturer, they have different formats of um, the RTSP address. So some of them require you for like the camera's username, such um, like username, passwords, and then the address. And some of them do not require you for the username and address. So it would be depends on the on the brand of the um, IP cameras, and you may find this. Um, RTSP address within your IP camera user guide. And then let's move back to the consoles. So after the brief introduction on the console, we will be taking a five minutes break. And then after the break, we will be continue on the more advanced um, feature. And um, so for the console here, so on the top navigation bar, it listed out all the device, um, separating by the device type. So if it's speakers, it will be listing out the, all the speaker here. But since I don't um, have any speakers that is on my system because I changed my um, SW15 to work as an intercom, right? So I will be having two intercoms, one IBO3, one SW15 on the systems and I have one phone, my master phone, then the cameras, microphones, and others. And then right here on these sections, so it would be showing all the device status. So if it's in a green icon, that means the device is available, ideal. And um, if it's busy, if it's working on some operations, um, playing music or making a paging, it will show in on the um, red um, colors. Then we just um, um, went through the, the, the video intercom and also it shows all the um, master phone here. So if you have multiple master phone, it will be listing out multiple uh, master phone here. On the left navigation bar, we got different uh, feature categories here, so on the music. So on the music, first you would like to do is to uploading the music into the systems. So you can uploading the, um, the MP3 files to the, um, to the systems. And also we have the uh, emergencies and alarm sounds. So you can adding the, um, the alarm sounds into this alarmed um, library, the audio library here, and then um, changing the, the emergency type audio from, from the, um, these options. So you may um, change to be another uh, music file or to play like multiple files here. Uh, and one question from yesterday, this, uh, emergencies and this name, they are all um, hot coded. So you cannot change the name on the emergency here or these, like this fold leaf, you cannot change the name on it. Then um, we just upload the uh, music file. So the next thing would be creating the playlist. I don't know what I call Emily's playlist. And selecting the uh, music files. Save, oops, creation file, right. Okay, so I need to check my music file for these. I remember I deleted, but not sure why it's so in here. And then um, let me switching my cameras. Oops. All right, give me one second. It seems like OK. 
Okay. Um, something is wrong with my Zoom. I'm not able to turn study. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, let me share the. Where did I live? So let me share the desktop. No, I swear the dispatch console here. Sure, here it goes. And then the next thing we would like to do is to play the uh play a quick music. So I believe 1001 is my SW15 um place. You can select the Emily uh, playlist. Then click on plate. Okay, and stop the music here. So that is a quick demonstration on the most basic feature while playing a background music. Then the, let's quickly go over the other features uh, meeting. So for meetings, we will need to invite different devices from the uh, panel here and then click on the meeting and it will invite the devices into a meeting room. And uh, for tasks, so um, let's go over this setting first. So, so tasks, it will list out all the tasks on this page, on this interface. And then if you would like to check the um, tasks for today, you can click on today's. And we also have the logs on like what um, time and days it has the task um, operated. And the static is complete or it fails, um, et cetera. For Tasks. So let's create a task. So for task name, let's do task 01. So we sub on our systems, we support three type of tasks. Let me switching my camera back. Here we go. So um, we are supporting um, three type of tasks. So for the first one would be the immediate. As the name suggests, it will be triggered immediately after you create the task. So um, after we fill all the names, we need to choose the audio type. You can set it up with a music or a TTS or record a message or a alarm. So let's do a music here. So we can choose in the playlist and the play mode would be like default order or like shuffle or times um, three options here. And also you may changing the volume. Let's do a lower here. And then next, we can select the device to operate for um, this task. So I have my 101 as my speaker. So 101 and then save. You guys hear the music? Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years of life. Okay, let's stop the task and then go to the second type of task. Task 002. So the task 002 is a timetable task. So you may choose it as once off. So once off, you need to select a specific day, only one day within a time range, like no, no, like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And for the repeated uh, options, that is going to be a repeated uh, task. So it will trigger that uh, within the date and time range that you select. For example, I would like to play a announcement on January, uh, only from the January 1st to the uh, 31st um, at a specific time, like 
I would like to play a after school announcement with for five minutes. Five minutes. Fine. For five minutes. And um, I would like to play these announcements only within the school day, uh, Monday to Friday. So I will need to uncheck Sunday and Saturday here. And also we have the periodic um, options for two modes. So the difference between this mode is for the first uh, mode, you are going to choose the um, how often, like how often you would like to play the, um, the audios for how long. So for example, for every one minute, I would like to play this announcement for 30 seconds. And then the second minute, the second one minute will be playing another 30 seconds. And then the third um, minute will be playing another 30 seconds. And um, the mode two will be the break time. So that um, occurs on when the operation time is longer than the audio file. So for example, if you would like to play an announcement for one hour and your audio file is only five minutes long, you can set up a break time here. So after I play the whole audio files for one uh, for five minutes and then it will have a one minute break and then it will play again and then one minute break and then play again. So that is the uh, major difference between the two modes. Then next, you will be same as the immediate task. You'll be choosing the um, audio type to be like music, uh, alarm, message. And then um, next would be, uh, I need to choose at least one. Okay, and then uh, choosing the device, same as the immediate. Then the last uh, type would be the dial number task. So it is a preset task. So you're going to set up the task first and check it when you need to use it. So let's do task three next. And we will be giving a specific number to this task. So it's, this number is basically a password. So you need to keep this number only between the dispatch users, not like everyone knows the, um, the task number and like everyone can trigger the, um, like not everyone, but you, you still need like a protection on it, right? So I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the next would be same as usual. So select a music and then the, the then next. Save. Then for um, triggering the dial number task, um, there will be two options to trigger the task. One, uh, I mean, there's one option, a uh, multiple option, here we go. So the uh, common use case would be using the IP phone to trigger the task with the um, star 11 and plus the task number to trigger the task. And also you may um, put in this task number on a bottom, for example, on a um, IBO3, a intercom uh, bottom. So whenever like anyone is push the buttons on the IBO3, it can trigger this task. So um, let's use my um, IP phone on my desktop to trigger the task uh, first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have my, make sure that I using these. Um, this 
Active Trials 101. Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years of life. I thought I should uh, move my fib phone to. And I should do the operation there. Here it goes. So uh, because I have two SIP accounts that is registered with my um, SIP phone, so and I was uh, choosing the wrong SIP lines for making the dial test. And uh, let's move back to the to the where did we left? So uh, we come completed the tests, so for alarms. So here basically it is a um, history tables for, for all the um, alarms history. So you can check on the uh, alarms and also we have the report and ignore the um, history here. Then um, on the recording. So uh, one question from yesterday was downloading the recording um, files so two places that you can download the recording so one would be uh, from here select the recording and click on download and then the um, second place would be on the IP audio center you can download the recording within the uh, recording uh, sections and also we have the meeting recording then uh, for settings so more advanced settings as um, you guys may aware of that the dispatch console does not have any logos. So we don't have um, any logos or um, circle names on this dispatch console, but we save a um, in uh, save a names feature for you guys to changing the names. So you may change the names for example, I have my uh, Emily's console here, and it will be displaying on the, the front right here, the front um, interface. And um, after the break, I will be showing you how to change the logo for our IP audio centers. And we also have that feature available uh, for changing the logo. And let's see what else, lock out, da, da. okay. And then uh, for the bottom, bo bottoms, navigation bars on the left side, we got all these telephony features. So if there is a call going on that we can select this specific call and then do the like monitor or whisper or split, et cetera, for the uh, telephony features. And then the uh, right bottom navigation bar is showing all the music feature, such as like choosing a playlist, and we um, can select like multiple devices for paging and also for alarms. So we can choose the default alarms um, audio files. We have the meeting and addressing the, um, the volumes and stuff. So that is a quick walkover on the, um, on the console, on the dispatch consoles. And um, let's take a five minutes break here and after the break we will be um, introducing let me share here we will be introducing the more advanced feature using the m coins and also the ip audio centers okay sure okay.
Let me stop sharing and see if any question. Um, let me quickly answer some of the question here. Da, da, can mean alarm can alarm to a means when hot fan fire. The passbook by default, in case you don't remember the passbook, what is the process to recover them? And so for uh, the passbook question, you mean the, so if we, if you don't, like if you forgot your passbook for the dispatch user, you may um, log into the IP audio centers and under the dispatch user, you can change the password. And if you forgot the password for logging in into the IP audio centers, there is also a, um, I believe that is on the endpoint. We have a place that you can change the, um, the password for the endpoints. So on each endpoint under systems account, you can have the um, password change. And if you forgot the password for logging in into the IP audio centers, you can change the password within the 1990 parts under the, um, the management systems. And if you forgot the password for your server, we have a um, a um, user like a super user, so you can log in to the um, but you need to use command to log into the system using the uh, super credentials and then change the password there. But the um, the super user is information is not available on the website, so or like in any of the uh, documents that we have, but if you do like need have the domains on changing the password for the systems, I can provide you like a um a um instruction on how to change the password later by emails. And um, as speakers and gateways, so yes. The IP audio center can, um, so the third party speakers and gateways can register on the IP audio centers as long as the device are uh, SIP enabled. So you need to make sure that the device surpass the SIP portal card. Then if it is, it can um, register to the IP audio centers. How many cameras we can connect? So, um, Actually, we didn't set a limitations on the cameras that you can connect with a device, with one device, but for video linkage purpose on the console uh, video panels, it can show at most 16 video streaming at the same times. So, but if like, for example, you have a intercom and you connect it with like, six, like 60 of the IP cameras, it will only showing the first 16 IP cameras on the consoles, but not the, the leftover um, 34 uh, cameras. Does it make sense? And let's have a break here and we will um, we're returning back in like four minutes. I need to get some water.
So everyone, if you need a hand, I'm cutting or do you And I thought that the demo in the lab or visual machine using the other body tumble. The center worked it well in basic syllabus, uh, but I have a bunch of do you think it is because why it doesn't work the celebrating message music alarms? So if you are using our um, systems and using a third party device, so it would be like very depends on the third party device because they do have like a lot of um, restriction on the uh, features by um, like using the third party systems um, for it. But you should be like for using a third party uh, devices on the IP audio center, you should be able to do the most basic feature, such as like paging and not even like background music. So some of the device, they don't like even support for the background music um, um, features there. So it would be like very depends on the, um, on the device. Okay, and then um, let's um, continue. Okay, let me share my um. um. Let me share my screens. There you go. So let's take a look on the um, changing the logo. I know uh, some of you may were interested in this feature, so that's why I bring it out today. So the pay places, the access for changing the, um, the uh, logo would be on the path of the IP address and then slash setting and then slash custom. 
So that is the path that you can replace the logo right here. So uploading your own logo and it will replace the logo in the front. So you can see the Jekyll logo here and also on the login page logo. And um, I don't think I have a uh, image that is matched with these uh, puzzles. It has to be a 240 by 60 uh, image in uh, PNG or JPG. So I don't think I have a, um, a logo with this, um, like I have an image with this um, size. But if you guys would already have the IP Audio Center installed that you may like uh, take it a try. And um, I don't think this access is uh, documented in any of the documents that we provide, but um, I just think that you guys might be interested in it. So I just, yeah, brought it up. And uh, anyways, here it goes. And then let's go back to the, um, to the uh, systems. Yes, and see what we can do first. So, da, da, da. all right. So let's take. So we went over the um the audio devices, including like the zip accounts, the places where you create the zip account, then devices. If you have the third party's um device, you need to manually adding the device here, like IP cameras. Then um dispatching the devices into the groups and then um, assigning the dispatch user who can manage this group. Then we have the telephony. So on our systems, we also support the telephony features, same as IPPBF. And um, on the IP audio centers, we also covered the most basic telephony feature from PBX. So let's take a look on the trunks. It is a place that you can register a zip trunks onto the system for making our bank score. So same as you registering the uh, zip trunks, you're filling in the um, trunk number, the servers, and then um, filling out all this information, selecting the audio codec and video codec, um, et cetera, and then click on submit to registering a zip trunk. And then um, the next thing you would like to do is to create at least one outbound route. So for creating the outbound route, it is the same as um, you do the outbound, the um, dial permission or dial route um, on the PBS. So you're filling in the names like dial route. So you may, um, at this point, you may creating a different um, style or different uh, type of outbound rules, such as one outbound rules for international call and one outbound rules only for domestic call, etc. And um, for separating the international or domestic, it will be um, using the patterns. So X stands for any digits that is from zero to nine. And then N start, um, stay for any digits from two to nine, I believe. And if you have a dot, that means any infinite numbers or letters behind. So one of the most common pattern that we would use is the X dot or XX dot or dot. That means the, num the, uh, the phone number has to be started with two digits. And if you are withdrawing on the um, on a specific call, you can do like the um, the external call has to be start with one, so it has to be once, and then you have the um, the following following digits with the um, infinite number. So that is the pattern, and also selecting the uh, zip trunk. So since I don't have any uh, zip trunks registered on the system, so I got nothing to choose. And then also we got the prefix and suffix. So then the inbound rule. So when you are using the zip trunks, you will be more than likely have multiple number. Like um, 
and uh, we call this sub number as the DID numbers. So for example, if the uh, SIP provider provides you like a DID number one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you also have a uh, number like two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to separating the calls from different DID, selecting the destination. For example, it goes to a IVR or it goes to a specific device. So I can choose the specific device here. If it goes to the IVR, I can choose the IVR. And also for the groups. So that is choosing the destination for a specific DID. So if you have like more than one DID number, so you're going to like creating the inbound rule for the DID. Then we have the IVR. So the um, we have two default set up IVR here. And if you would like to edit or um, adding your own IVR, you can do it right here. Um, filling out the IVR's names and selecting the uh, prompt. And then we got the event such as like if we press one, it goes to a specific destination. If we press two, we go to another, um, like another destinations or operation here. So that is the setup for the IVR. Then um, for reports, so on the report here, I don't think I have any call logs. So let's search it, um, see if I have any call logs for today. No. Uh, recording, I should have some recording here. So for our systems, it is uh, automatically saving the audio recordings um, for you, if you would like to turn off the recording, you need to do it right here within the um, not the the recording setting under settings. So all three options is automatically enabled. If you would like to um, stop recording a um, specific type or a specific um, IP phone, we can do it here. So if like. Um, you don't want to record any of the conversations from your boss IP phone, so we can uh, turn it on, turn it off here. But um, on this page, everything is automatically enabled. And let's go back to the um, recording. So within this, here it goes. So um, four type of recording, live announcements, phone call, intercoms, and meeting. And um, here is the second place that you can download the recording. And um, thank you for all the feedback regarding for the uh, recordings. We will be implementing the delete feature on the uh, recording for the next version. So it will be implementing on, um, you are able to delete the recording. And also we also um, have the uh, requirements on out automatically delete recording within a selected time period, such as a weekly delete or a monthly delete on the specific type of recording. We also put it into the uh, feature list for the future uh, implementation. And see uh, system setting. So, so those are the um, default volumes. I believe for the um, the paging volume, we default is sitting um, on seven and the alarm is 75. Then we have the uh, paging beats. So if you would like a um, ringtone before the um, paging starts, like dun, 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 we can set it up here using the paging uh, beats with the, um, you can upload, you can upload with, uh, no, uh, here we go. So audio uh, prompts. So you can uploading the audio prompts here and then selecting right here, selecting the, um, the prompts. And then um, 
ring um, direction. So if you have the, um, you can set up the ring direction here and also for safe setting. So if you have um, changing the, um, the part for the safe photo cards, you can, uh, you may manually change the part right here to matching with your, because like uh, most of the time when we go up on a project, we would like to change the default part uh, 50, 60 to another part for um, safety considerations and for like security consideration. And um, NAT, if you need to use the um, NAT, you may um, enable these options and filling out the corresponding um, IP address and like domain names um, for the NAT servers and MOBAS. So MOBAS is basically a um, fire alarm gateway. It looks similar to the um, paging gateway. Instead, it is a gateway with um, a lot of dry contact relays and the dry each of the like 32 or 64 of the dry contact relay and each of the relay it is control um, connecting to a to a um, device like a fire um, a fire device and then um, for the mobile um, gateways it used the mobile photo card. So we have implemented the mobile photo cards on our systems. So if you are having the uh, mobile um, gateways and you would like to make the integrations, we also um, have this feature supported. And um, setting up the mobile is not that uh, complicated. You need to get the IP address from the mobile gateways first and then uh, figuring out right here and then um, moving back to the dispatch console for the operation, like the passes on a specific part on the mobile gateways. And um, I will be shooting a video on how to use the mobile gateways because that is, I think the mobile gateway is not that commonly used in uh, internationally. I see a lot of them in, um, in China here, but haven't have any um, clients ask me for like the information for the mobile, but I will be um, shooting a video and post on YouTube for your reference. And um, for feature code, so the star 11 and the star 12 are hot coded you cannot change these two feature code. So this star 11 is for you to trigger the task. So um, feel remember that we created the dial number task, right? So um, when we need to trigger the task, we need to put the star 11 and followed by the, the task number, for example, like one, two, three, four, five, six to trigger the test. So, and then star one, two is to stop the test. And uh, for another feature call, like um, DNDs or wake up call, um, always forward for all these feature code, they are changeable. You can change to another uh, feature code. You can um, manually change to like a feature code that you can remember. And then um, recording, uh, let's see, we went over the recording, audio dispatch labels um, for security. So um, in the past, if you need to check the whether or not a device is in the backlist, you need to go into the management systems and um, using the comments to pull out the um, IP tables for checking the device. But for now, we have bringing the back leaf and also the right leaf to the front interface. That way it's more convenient for our users to check the device that is in the back leaf. So uh, one application scenario would be if you forgot your password, or your username and you're trying to um, register a, a um, device onto the system, 
and felt it for many times because it has been sending a lot of um, unsuccessful attempts to the systems. So the system would be considered this as a attack. So it would uh, put in the device IP address into the blacklist within a specific time period that the device is not allowed to make any registration. So if that is the case, if you um, if you are registering your device and you know that your your password and username is correct and everything is correct, the first thing you would like to check is to check the backlist. It will be more than likely in the backlist and if sewing in the backlist, just remove it and then try it again, it should be work. And then opposite as the backlist, so any IP address that is on the white list won't have the restriction on um, the numbers of attempts. So um, I believe we setting up like uh, five attempts within two seconds or within three seconds. Um, Intrusion prevention, so that if the um, features is also um, automatically enabled. So if you would like to use the SIP or the SSH for, um, for remote, you can um, use this instruction prevention here. And uh, license, uh, we went over the license. So let's look at the device. So for the interface of our devices, they look pretty much the same. Besides like more, um, like uh, several more features or less features on the devices. So let's take a look on the IVO3 here because I have upgraded the um, IVO3 to the latest version. So it got like a couple more features on this version. Then let's go over the um, P2P. So there are two options for you to use um, without the server. So the first one would be the P2P and the second option would be the multicast. Major difference between P2P and multicast is P2P then for peer-to-peer. -peer, it only allows one device to call in another device. So it is a one-to-one -one communication. But this communication is, is a um, two-way communication, so they can talk to each other. While the multicast, it is a one-way audio communication. That means only would be applied to like background music or paging, so they cannot do the intercom uh, feature. So if you would like to use the P2P, we can um, enable the P2P account here and um, creating the um, P2P um, user ID, because when you are using the P2P, you, you are probably like um, calling to a IP phones and some of the IP phones, they may not allow for anonymous, on, anonymous call. So you need to have a um, user ID in front of the IP address when it's calling to a, another device. And, um, this option is telling you like, do you allow anonymous call to your device, to this device if you are allowed it? So when a um, IP phone is calling to the intercom without the user ID, we are allowed to do it. And also we can set up the uh, auto answers or notes or answer delays, et cetera. And then let's look at the multicast. So for multicast, um, so I believe we have one question from last night was whether or not it can support the multicast for 500 um, speakers. So I confirmed that these questions with our um, engineering team and um, 
So by using the multicast, we are basically sending one operation stream to the um, to the switch uh, in where you connect like your 500 um, speakers. So it will be depends on the capacity on the, um, the PoE switch or like another switch that you have to connect with the um, with your speaker. So for our for our device on the device systems, we are only sending one operation signals, one operation task to the switch, and then the switch will be dispatching to like 500 streaming to each of the speakers to be um, playing the um, the audio. And then um, if you are using the multicast, make sure that you are filling the same multicast address, including the pods. Um, on the devices. Um, for example, if you would like to use a IP phone to make paging for 10 of the speakers. So on the um, IP phone, you need to fill in the same multicast address, same as the um, as the right here for 10 of the speakers. And um, let's see, for codex, um, don't think we need to go over the codex and events. And uh, by the way, for the P2P and B multicast demonstration, we have the video on YouTube. So if you are interested in it, please welcome to um, find the uh, video on YouTube. And video. So uh, we went over the video a little bit here um, in, um, in the beginning. So if you would like the, so we have two devices that have cameras, right? So we have the IVO3 and we have the SQ10. So if you would like to use the cameras on this device as a individual cameras, you can turn on these options. It provides the, um, the corresponding uh, RTSP address. Then you can leave this setting in the four like the uh, payroll type or the empty yields, then submit. And um, let's take a look on uh, volume, volume, so, and IO settings. So we are getting um, more, um, so a lot of clients, they are confused on the um, IO setting here. So let's take a more uh, deeper look onto the IO settings. So for the press to talk, that means the destination number th that you would like to call when you're pressing the buttons. So any of the device that contains a button has these options. So if, um, since I have, I'm on my IVO3, right? So I got only one button. So I have one button, one press to talk number. But if you are on an X10 SIP paging gateway, you will be showing two of the press to talk number here because it can connect with two buttons. Same as the SQ10, since it can connect with two buttons, you will be seeing two buttons, two uh, uh, press to talk number here. And then for this number, you can fill out as a, as a, um, device number, like a SIP number, or you can trigger a task. So for example, if we are on SW15 and um, my IO settings. So if I connected my SW15 with the press buttons, that way I can uh, fill out the task number, like one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the task we just created um, to play a song, right? So I can trigger the task by using the buttons right here and uh, press again to end call. So let's uh, let me switch my cameras and have a quick demonstration. See if we can get a book. So one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Hello, it's me. And then I press again to end the task. I was wondering if after to go over everything. They say the times. And then um, let's move on to the um, let's continue using the SW15 uh, for the um, trigger by DTMF signal. So the DTMF signal is basically the IP phone's number panels on your IP phone. So let's assuming that um, we are on the intercom and the intercom is connected with a door magnetic. So when the people is press the button on the intercoms, it will be direct, it will be um, automatically to call my, my um, dispatch user's IP phone, right? When I, I I'll say um, dispatch user and I um, grab the call and confirm it, okay, uh, that is the, that is the correct person, or uh, I need to open the door, I can use my IP phone and press one star or like whatever um, DTMF number that you would like, like two star or three stars to open the door. So that is the uh, common use case. And um, we can actually try it out here. So let's do one star and then um, the relay control would be the light on the speakers and then have on delay. Uh, let's do hang up with that. All right, let's um, have a quick demonstration. Now I need to call my IP phone and my IP phone is 1003, right? Make sure I am setting up the right devices. 1003 is my IP phone. So I press the button, press the button, it will call into my IP phone and then I'm using my IP phone one star to unlock the door. In this case, we will be getting the um, alarm light to on. So let's um and and I hang up the car, it the light goes off. So that is a quick demonstration on using the DTMF um, um, signals for trigger settings. And it can also control spy call statics. For example, um, you would like to not using the DTMF instead if um, there is any incoming or outgoing call to the device, you would like the light to go on. So we can using the call statics that is commonly used in um, scenarios like um, if your speaker is in a noisy environment, in uh, some cases that the staff may not able to hear the speaker is playing a announcement or like an important announcement. In this case, we can connect the alarm light to the speakers and when there is a audio message coming or a call coming, that the light will be go, go on to take the attention for the staff. And if we um, choose the call static, so when I call the, the SW15, when I call the speakers, the lights should be on. 
so she called the speakers. I can use my phone or I can use my um, dispatch console. So my speaker is 1001, 1001. So that is the uh, quick demonstration on using the IO settings. So pretty much on the um, both models of, I mean like three models of the speaker, the SQ10, the SW15, and also the SC15, the IO settings are pretty much the same besides um, one, two of them with like only one uh, press to talk but, uh, numbers and the SQ10 and the CPG gateway with two. But uh, besides the numbers on the press to talk number, they are pretty much the same. So you can set it up um, this way. And um, another thing that we need to be aware of is, let me switch my camera back, build in. And another thing that we need to be aware of is the mode here. So since um, if you turn it on the auto answers feature options, and um, if you selecting the mode as a answer that we said, that means like whenever there is a call to my device, it will be automatically immediately answer the call, right? So, once I answer the call, the light is stopped. So the you won't if you are setting the um the same environments as I do, you would like to set that to delay reset or hang up reset. Um, it depends on your requirement. But if you are setting the lights and your um your device is on the auto answer mode, and you have the answer that we said, so you won't be able to see the lights to go on. And uh, that confuses people sometimes. And also for trigger that type, we have, since the alarm lights I have is automatically um, flashing, but if you have another light that is like on a static mode, we can control it with the um, like fast flashings or slow flashing. And we end, went over the IO settings and uh, API. Okay, so um, we implemented this uh, API settings with 1.2.2 or 1.2.1 in uh, last year. So it provides the options for a third party server to use our device by providing them the um, API. For example, if you would like, when, uh, for example, if I turn on the incoming enables option here, so when I have a incoming call to my device, to the SW15, I can trigger a URL, I can trigger a API. For example, um, if you have a, um, your, a API from another speakers or from another device, you can fill it out here. And also same as the outgoings or answer that, so different statics on the call event, you can connect with a um, URL and also same as relays. And so on the bottom API setting, it is providing the device, the SW15 API, to be used by the third parties. Um, for example, if you are on a um, NVR system and when the camera is de detected with a um, unusual operation, so it will be trigger a uh, signal. So when it trigger a signal, if there is place for your NVR for the um, the um, API events or the trigger events, you can put in these APIs into your NVR systems. 
and then it will be automatically um, should be play API. So here we go. So for um, the easiest example would be when the camera is detected for the unusual operations or uh, motions, then it will trigger the speaker to play a alarm sound. So for example, we have the, uh, we provided the play API here and then stop play API. Then we also um, have the stop API. You can change the variables um, within this API. For example, like the volume of the, the, the sound and also the ID stand for the audio um, songs, the ringtone. So you can choose different um, ringtones for to, to, to be played. And then we have the stop, so stopping the, um, the device. So let's do a um, quick example, see. Let's see, so we can do like, um, make the easiest setup would be uh, when I, call the intercom, when I call my IBO3, it would um, call this API. It will call this API on the on my SW15 to play a play a uh, audio file. So see what audio file that I can choose. Ring, big band, old phone, sweet. So we can do like two. Um, so on the IBO3, let's go to, oh, I was in the APIs and goes when I am, so when there is a incoming call to the IBO3, it will be um, call back this URL. So let's change the ID to two and um, decrease the volume because it is pretty late um, right here. Ah, uh, sweet. Then submit. Then I also need to submit here for enabling the, the API. Hello. Okay, here we go. Turn it off. Enable. So if I call the IBO3, it should have the SW15 to play the ringtone that I selected. So let's give it a try. Um, IV03 that is hmm. 1002, so I need to call my 1002 from the uh, pen note. And let me switch back my cameras, cameras. Whoops, cameras and then intercom. Okay, that is the quick example for using the API. So on all of our devices, we have the um, APIs available for the uh, for both using the third party API or providing the device API to be used by the third party. And then let's go to, we went over the multicast, we uh, went over the from language. So um, right here, the uh, voice language. So uh, currently we are supporting only Chinese and English. There will be a price to when you are um, getting the IP address from the device, it will announce out in the language that you select in Chinese or in English. Then uh, we have network. So network, we um, all of our devices, it is fully in uh, DHCP, but if DHCP is not available, it will be um, defaulting in the static IP. And you may choose the access time to be um, HTTP or like HTTPS for a more security um, credential. 
then we have the time you can choose the um the NTP um, server here. I can so uh, for devices, if you forgot your um, um you can change the um the password right here. And um, for upgrading, it's the place that you're uploading the firmware to upgrading the um, device. And if your device is in the latest version, you will feel happy to use the FAAD tool for the bulk upgrading. And uh, for reboot and reset and... Um, So we also provide a pin option so you can check whether or not your device is um, running with the ethernet and the, um, the ethernet captures with the device to provide us the files to analyze the issue. And also we have the um, important export option on the systems, on the device systems um, files. So you can export the systems files um, using selecting a uh, format that you would like to choose, YARM or JSON, or uploading here to recover the uh, backup files that you have. And also be providing the, uh, the auto provisioning uh, feature. So this feature is very convenient if you have a, you have math, um, devices and you don't need to back up them um, one by one manually. So you need, um, all you need to choose is the access mode. If you have a storage on a on the cloud, you may choose the HTTPs and using the, um, the cloud address or the uh, TFTP on a local um, storage. Choosing the format, it will be automatically back up the files for the devices and store it within the, um, the location that you, uh, that you provide. And then um, let's see what else we got here. Do we have any questions so far? So we um, went over some of the events setting and also the, um, we went over all the settings on the IP audio centers and also on uh, the device. And see if we have any question that I can answer at this point. Okay, did I miss anything here? No question? Okay, so oh, thank you, thank you. So um, let's see if I can think of any of the uh, common issue on our systems that you may face in the future. And um, let's see. Um, All right, so um, from the previous webinars, I got a question that is regarding a uh, multiple SIP accounts. So let's assume that you register the speaker on more than one server, you register it on the IP audio centers, and at the same time, you register it on the IP PBS. Is it, so the question would be, is it possible to have two operation to run simultaneously? And the answer to that question is no. 
our device can work one operation at a time. So for example, um, on the IP Audio Center server, I have my um, dispatch console using it for background music. And then on the um, IP PBX servers, I'm trying to call the call this device, call this speaker is not going. So uh, thank you. And it's not going to work. It works the same um, uh, process as a IP phone. So let's assume you have one IP phone, right? So your IP phone is on a call. When another call is coming, trying to call this IP phone, it will be uh, in a BC startup and it will wait or it's not going to like cut through, through the, the operation that is running, right? So it's the same um, mechanism that is running on the speaker. So you need to wait for the speaker's operation to be done. And then when the start deck is free, you can use the PBX um, to call the speakers. So that is one of the questions I got from the previous uh, webinars. And see what else. And uh, one question from yesterday uh, regarding to the NTP server. So for choosing the time of the NTP server, if uh, what if the NTP server failed? You cannot get the time from the um, NTP server. For all the clock chip, we have a default times for the um, setting a default times with the clock chip. So it would if the NTP server failed, you cannot get the time. It will be defaulted go through the time that is saved that with the within the chip. And um, regarding to the NTP failed, uh, NTP server failed, we are also um, putting in the list to adding, to have a option to adding multiple um, NTP server. So you can choose like multiple um, NTP server just in case the, the first one fail and it will go to the next and then it will go to the next if like all, let's assuming we have three. If all three is, or failed it, it will go to the default um, time. And uh, see, what else question do I got? Um, uh, report, we'll be adding the delete uh, option. Recording, da, da, da. No question? Any other question? And um, again, so on the device, um, when you are registering the third parties endpoints on the on our servers, make sure you are checking the type of device is correct, because sometimes it may mix up with the type of um, devices. Could you please indicate the, the, the any? And if you are um, using the BM11s with the um, speakers, make sure you change the type to intercom, not the paging device. Jason, you have any other questions? No. Okay. Okay, so if we don't have any uh, question for today, I guess we will be ending the webinars for today. And for the uh, presentation size and the recording, um, Jason will be sending to all uh, emails in our chat box here, uh, possibly by um, tomorrow morning, because it takes a little bit of time for generating the, uh, the recording.
um, if we don't have any questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a email or drop Jason's email or uh, anyways, like send us an email or um, call us on Skype. We are happy to answer your question anytime. So thank you so much for all of you uh, participating in um, yesterday and today's trainings and uh, exams are available. If, um, please take the exams, get a chance to win the gift card and uh, what else? Yeah, so you guys have a nice, leave me your email here if you need it, okay. So, and you guys have a nice date. Bye. Let me stop sharing.